This week on Tech Wrap, mobile-based chauffeur service Uber under fire. Samsung to slash the number of smartphone models for 2015. And selfie takers behold the rotating camera of the Gioni E-Life E7 Mini. Hi, I'm Natasha Gutierrez, and this is TechGraph. App-based pay-per-ride chauffeur service Uber is under fire in the U.S. An Uber executive offhandedly says the company should consider hiring a team to dig dirt on journalists to deflect criticism against the company. Emil Michael, Uber's senior vice president for business, admits snooping on journalists' lives can be a campaign the company could pursue if need be. Michael also cites one target, Sarah Lacey of Pando Daily, who had written some unfavorable pieces on Uber and the company's culture. As if this weren't enough, Uber says it's investigating Uber New York's Josh Morer for reportedly violating the privacy of a journalist by accessing confidential logs of her Uber rides without her permission. Uber is also fighting a battle in the Philippines as lawmakers want it shut down while they try to figure out how to regulate it. The Transportation Secretary June Abaya jumps to Uber's defense saying, quote, Commuters say they feel safer taking these private vehicles for hire. So why put a stop to what is clearly for the public's benefit? Facing tough competition in emerging markets like China and India, Samsung decides to slash the number of smartphone models it will release in 2015. Samsung reports a near 50% plunge in third quarter net profit following a 20% drop in the previous quarter. This was caused by aggressively priced smartphones from Chinese manufacturers. The Korean company hopes to address this by focusing on just a handful of smartphone models that can compete with the devices released by companies like Huawei, Xiaomi, and Lenovo. Samsung is still ahead in sales volume, but the rise of the Chinese brands pushes them to take action. Nokia is the first major brand to add the reversible USB to one of its devices. The newly announced N1 tablet will have the reversible USB Type-C connector, making it the first high-profile release to feature the new USB Type. But with a planned release date of February 19, 2015, it might not be the first one to hit the market. With other brands gearing up to announce products at the Consumer Electronics Show or CES in January. Facebook is reportedly planning a more work-friendly version of the social network, calling it Facebook at Work. Facebook at Work would look like the current Facebook site but will allow personal posts to be separated from a user's work profile. It will also let users interact with workmates and other professional contacts while allowing for online collaboration over documents. Facebook spins off another one of its popular features into a separate app. After requiring users to download the Messenger app separately, the popular social network now releases the Facebook Groups app. The standalone app for iOS and Android devices will show users the groups they are part of. Users can share information, photos, or links while staying in touch. You can also control which groups you would like to receive notifications from. And if there's a group you would like to access right away, there's an option to pin that group right on your home screen. This is not Facebook's first app focused on groups. In October 2014, the company released Rooms. The app is essentially taking the experience of online forums and brings it to your mobile phone. Do you like taking selfies? How about selfies taken with a 13 megapixel camera? You can do just that with the Gioni eLife E7 Mini. Rod Neil Catellis has this quick review. Dubbed the selfie smartphone, let's take a look at the hardware of the Gioni eLife E7 Mini first. The entire body of the E7 Mini measures a little over 5 inches. It looks sleek, thanks to the way the top and bottom of the phone is rounded towards its front and back. It has a plastic finish that a female friend likened to a powder case of a makeup brand. That said, the screen and body are quite prone to smudges. The volume rockers are located at the right-hand side. Underneath it is the power button. 
At the bottom, you'll find the headphone jack and the USB port. Up top, you'll see the rotating camera. The E7 Mini sports a 13 megapixel camera that can be rotated as many times as you want to take a shot of yourself or what you're looking at. Behind it is what appears to be speaker grills. Let's take the camera for a spin. Rolling. We took a few shots inside the Rappler office with the lights turned down. The E7 Mini's camera performs well in low light. It's in well-lit areas that you might have a problem. Take for example the shot inside our editing room with the lights turned on. If you're not careful where you tap for exposure, the camera tends to blow up highlights. Good thing you can tweak the settings. By default, the camera's exposure is set to zero, with saturation, brightness, and contrast all set to medium. In the shot, with the saturation and brightness set to low and exposure set to negative 2, the whites are not as blown up, but it still stands out. And since this is a selfie phone, we asked our lovely anchor to take a photo of herself. This was shot in low light. The photo is not as crisp as you would expect from a 13 megapixel camera. There's also noticeable noise on the photo. But we do like how easy it is to take selfie videos. This video is taken directly from the E7 Mini's camera. If you're into video blogging, the rotating camera is very convenient as you can see your shot right away from the 4.7 inch display which serves as a viewfinder. This lets you see your shot right away and adjust it as opposed to having to estimate the angle. But there's plenty of room for improvement. The camera needs to compose shots with better color balance and not blow out the whites. As an everyday phone, the E7 Mini is solid. The 1.7 GHz octa-core processor does its job nicely, giving you a generally smooth experience. If you're a casual user who just loves Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, then this phone gives a satisfying experience. And even with just 1 GB RAM, it can handle your casual mobile gaming. Video playback is also pleasant. The phone runs on Android 4.2.2 Jellybean, soon upgradable to Android KitKat with Amigo 2.0 on top. The Amigo user interface looks clean, but what we loved most about it is how easy it was to switch between apps with just a single tap on the home button. Overall, at 13,999 pesos or roughly around $312, the E7 Mini might be a bit pricey given its features. And with the focus on the rotating camera, you would think the photos would be nothing but stellar. Rodney Quiteles for TechRap. And that was TechRap. Follow Rappler on social media, join the conversation online, send us emails. The search for the next TechRap anchor is still on. Keep sending in your entries. If you haven't yet, subscribe to Rappler's YouTube channel. That's all for this week, folks. I'm Tosh Garris. Thanks for dropping by.